Mandy Sellers has a very rare condition. She was born with extremely large legs, and throughout her life, they've continued to grow. The way that Mandy looks is totally unique. Mandy had to have her left leg amputated in 2010, but the operation has caused her stump to grow bigger and bigger. I've put three stone on in two years. Another two years, it could be another three stone. Now, her continually expanding lower limbs are threatening her independence. <laughs> I'm 37. I don't want to be bedridden, and that's not the way I want to live my life. Mandy has reached crisis point. It's got to stop. Something has got to be done or else it's going to have really negative consequences for Mandy's future. And it's not just Mandy's future at stake. Three-year-old American Emily Blankenship has a similar overgrowth condition. The genetic alteration which Mandy and Emily have is it is not identical, but it's extremely close. Now, Dr. Robert Semple has taken Mandy's case on and in a major breakthrough, believes he has found a drug which could help Mandy and eventually Emily too. I think that we can potentially stop the abnormal growth of your legs. Wow. <laughs> the medication has to work. It's my only chance. It's my last chance. But can this tiny pill really shrink Mandy's giant legs? Thirty-seven-year-old Mandy Sellers from Accrington in Lancashire was born with giant legs. Until 2010, she could walk, which meant she could live her life without being dependent on others. Mandy's fiercely independent and she's extraordinary because she keeps going. Her amazing positivity and strength and determination is something that you don't find in many people. It's quite a unique thing. As Mandy always finds ways of, of doing things. Obviously, uh, uh, some other people might just say, well, I'm, I'm going to give up, but that, that is not Mandy. But in 2010, Mandy developed an infection in her left foot and had to have it amputated. Mandy thought, I thought, doctors thought that um, when Mandy had a leg amputated, life would improve. But in reality, it's actually become a lot harder. In a cruel twist, the operation has triggered faster growth in Mandy's stump. As in the past, liposuction has also done. Well, the stump just, uh, just won't stop growing. <laughs> OK, done this a few times. It accelerated and it, it went, went bigger, didn't it, for, yeah. some, for some yeah. unforeseen reason. Today, Mandy is at the Specialist Mobility and Rehabilitation Centre in Preston with her friend Sue, having her stump measured. 104, 107. So as I'm going down, we can see that we've got a volume increase. That's a 110. Mandy's leg is six centimetres wider than when it was last measured three weeks ago. Somewhere in me there's something that's saying, you must grow, you must grow, and there's nothing that stops, stops it. It just simply carries on and carries on. Mandy's stump is now over a metre in circumference, and there's no indication this accelerated growth is slowing down. When was the last time that you were weighed? Maybe about three weeks ago, that's a guess. And that was 20 stone point, maybe 13 or 12, something like that. So it's gone up a couple of pounds. Since Mandy's leg was amputated in 2010, she has put on three stone. There's absolutely nothing I can do to stop that from happening. So, yep, not a surprise at all. And having to cope with legs that are growing larger each day is having a devastating effect on Mandy's mobility. Thank God it ain't working. Come on. Everyday tasks like getting on the bed are a struggle. For two years now, I've been housebound. There's no way that I can go out of my home to visit a friend, go to a concert, go to the cinema. I just can't do it. What makes Mandy's physique extraordinary is that her ever-expanding legs are starving her upper body. From the waist upwards, she has less than 5% fat, equivalent to a male triathlete. She's carrying more and more weight around an extra free stone, and obviously it's difficult having to move a whole weight with her arms. Now she's starting to have problems with her arms as well. She's getting a bit of arthritis. After Mandy's left leg was amputated, she was very keen to walk again. I always thought that if I did have a false leg, that it would make life easier because it would be lighter, but actually it makes it a whole lot harder to walk. 
And as Mandy's lower limbs continue to increase in size, the prospect of walking again seems further away than ever. The thing that I find difficult about putting a leg on is to actually push my stump into the bottom of the socket. Sometimes you can't get the fat exactly into the socket too well. It's going in anyway. It is. I've got to make sure I'm far enough in before I stand up, otherwise it just doesn't work because you can't get the balance right. Not far enough now. Sometimes it's just a case of winging it and see what happens, really. Mandy has now started to outgrow her third tailor-made prosthetic limb. One, two, three. No, 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 no. I think, you know, because the bed's low, I'm just pushing into that rather than... Ready? OK, let's go for it. One, two, three. You, the leg. Ugh. That's it, that's it. Well done. Uh -oh. So, how does that feel? I'm going to see if you can try and move the right foot or do you not feel balanced enough? Oh, All it will do is slide, isn't it? Just getting into her false leg has exhausted Mandy and she hasn't the strength to try to walk. Oh. Oh. Are you okay, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You didn't click your leg? No, I forgot. <laughs> it just didn't feel balanced because I felt like I was on, the, on my tiptoes. Mm. It's probably because that's grown, hasn't it? So you're not going in as far. No, so it's, so it's sitting it higher. higher. And that makes it doubly as difficult to move your right foot, doesn't it? I don't know what the answer is, do you? It's hard work. Mandy's condition is undiagnosed and untreated. Now she has reached a crisis point. She's desperate to find a way to stop her legs from growing. And there has to be some treatment found. Because if it isn't found, I mean, goodness knows what's, what's going to happen. We don't know. Well, she, she should possibly be totally immobile then well, that's and right. uh, lose, completely lose her independence. But there is hope. In August 2010, clinical endocrinologist Dr Robert Semple from Addenbrooke's Cambridge University Hospitals Trust decided to find out why Mandy's giant legs continue to grow. I've never to date seen anybody like Mandy. She certainly has an extraordinarily rare problem. I was fascinated by the possibility that there was a genetic mutation which affected only the lower part of her body but not the other part. Dr Semple knew Mandy's condition was caused by a genetic mutation, so he and his team at the Wellcome Trust Sangar Institute set out three goals. To isolate the rogue gene, to find out how it works and to look for medication to stop it. The team began with a series of intricate DNA tests. We took samples from both her leg and her arm. We grew them in the lab. We extracted some DNA from those samples. We actually then read the sequence of all the genes. And we asked the question, is there only one or a handful of changes which we can find in the leg, but not in the arm? Dr. Semple and his team are determined to find the rogue gene, which is causing the cells in Mandy's lower limbs to grow uncontrollably. But genetic research takes time something Mandy is running out of. Mandy Seller's left leg was amputated in 2010, but it's caused her lower limbs to grow bigger than ever. If a treatment is not found soon, she will be forced to move home. This wheelchair that I have, I'm kind of outgrowing it with ways, but if I got a bigger wheelchair, I wouldn't be able to get into the bathroom because I only just fit. So the major consequence of keeping on growing is I would have to move. This has been my home for 10 years. You know, I wouldn't want to have to move just because this silly leg is growing. Mandy was born with larger than average legs and unusually shaped feet. It didn't actually let my mum see me for about two weeks, I think it was. The doctors weren't sure what it was, and the only thing they actually said to my family was that they didn't expect me to live beyond two weeks. But Mandy defied the doctor's expectations. We didn't know what was wrong with Mandy. Eventually, Mandy, she started walking in her own way, didn't she, mm. and doing whatever, like, you know. Yeah. When I was at school, my condition didn't really hamper anything that I ever did. I could run around and I could play football, which I love doing. 
I mean, we went to lots of see lots of these ear specialists, didn't we? Mm. First thing what this ear specialist said, we think it'd be better if we take both Mandy's legs off. In fact, the amputation of Mandy's left leg in 2010 has actually made her life much more difficult. Her huge stump makes it hard to use a prosthetic limb. Well done. And she also has a problem with her remaining leg because she can no longer lift her right foot. The foot drop prevents me from walking. So my foot is just like that and the muscles in the ankle don't work. Mandy's search for someone to help her overcome her foot drop led to Bob Watts, a prosthetic expert who created the false limb which Heather Mills used in Dancing on Ice. Today, Mandy and Sue are endorse it, so Bob can assess her problem. Morning. I'm fine, thank you. Hopefully, he's going to be able to either make something or may have something that will help. I know how unique I am and my situation is, but he's the expert, so he'll know whether there is anything that he can make that will help. We'll have to just wait and see. For me to stand up, I need a foot flat on the floor and a toes flat on the floor to kind of push myself up. But then once I am stood up, I need something that brings the toes up to be able to flick through to walk. So it's kind of like, I need two things in one, really. Yeah. The only thing I'm worried about, Matthew, is at the back there. At this stage, I really don't know what the outcome will be. I'm not sure whether we can help or not. I'll need to see what function she has got at the moment. Have you got any movement in the ankle? Nothing. Not at all. How long has that been like that for? Since 2005. That movement now is a lot more than when we had it before. Let's just put it down on the floor. OK. Um, well, I think we ought to have a go. I, I think we can do something. I'm pleased that you know, you're going to give it a go at least to see what happens. We do tend to deal with some really unusual cases. Mm. And I'd say that you're quite unusual. <laughs> I think the nicest possible way. <laughs> it sounds crazy, but I thought it was going to be a bit bigger. Right. I, I thought your, leg, <laughs> your leg's not as big as I thought it was going to be. Mandy and Sue have travelled to Cambridge to meet endocrinologist Dr Robert Semple. He's been searching for the rogue gene that causes Mandy's legs to grow and he's told her that he has some important news. I'm just kind of a bit nervous, I guess, because you kind of don't know what he's going to say, do you? You hope that if someone's giving you some news, it's going to be good news. Quite a bit of science, I'm afraid, this morning, which, I, okay. which I, I hope is interesting and helps you understand mm. what's going on. So, as you know, we took a skin biopsy from your arm and from your left leg. Mm. We've used the best available technology to answer the question, can we find any changes in genes which are in your leg, but not in your arm? No. Mandy's been a medical mystery for decades. Now, at last, Dr. Semple can give her a diagnosis. Among the changes we found is one which um, I'm 99% certain that this is the reason that your legs have been growing so much all your life. Dr. Semple has discovered that Mandy has a mutation in a gene called PIK3CA in her lower body. In normal cells, a growth signal is switched on only when the body needs to grow. But in Mandy's case, the rogue gene causes this signal to be constantly switched on so that her lower limbs keep on growing out of control. This is a life-changing moment for Mandy. For the first time, she knows what makes her body unique. To me, it's unbelievable that you actually have found it, you know, I mean, it's not often I'm kind of lost for words, really, but I just really am because it's just, I never ever thought anybody would. I mean, you know, it's taken 36 years to find someone to even look at it, you know, to look at my case and have the technology really out there to look at my DNA and try and find anything. So, you know, thank you. <laughs> That's all I can say, really. Mandy is the first person in the world to be diagnosed with this specific mutation. Seller syndrome, here we come. I'm going to get it in there one day. <laughs> Dr. Semple's research has also revealed why the genetic mutation occurred. All of us start off as one cell, one fertilized egg cell. And by the time we become adults, we probably have something like 100 trillion cells in our body. And every single time that cell divided, all three billion letters of our DNA code have to be copied. And that's, that's astonishing. 
And if I asked you to copy out as fast as you could every, every book in the Harry Potter series in the next half hour, and then keep doing that for the next 10 years, you would make lots of mistakes. That's more or less what happens in the human body. And so we imagine that some very early stage of development had led to a mistake being made, which by plain bad luck, fell in a gene which is important for regulating cell growth. And Dr. Semple's research has confirmed Mandy's genetic mutation isn't inherited. It doesn't mean that you can look back in your family and see that um, one of your parents would have had it and, and work out the inheritance. This is, this is a mistake, an unlucky mistake that happened. Knowing they didn't pass on the condition is especially important to Mandy's parents. I kind of do get the feeling that they may have thought in the past that the condition I have was due to something one of them or both of them did. You know, but obviously today definitely rules that out that whatever happened was just a, a freak accident, if you want to call it that. Well, after like 37 years of thinking maybe it's something that we'd done wrong or whatever, to realise it weren't. It's a great big, big relief, oh, isn't it? it is. To think, well, no, we are not guilty. Mandy has always dreamed of getting a diagnosis, but thought it would be impossible to find a treatment for her condition. Dr. Semple has achieved the unthinkable. I think that we can potentially stop the abnormal growth of your legs. I hope that in the next few months we'll be in a position where we have a serious chat again about actual medicines that we want to try. It's just like, really? You know, am I hearing you right? It's just so unbelievable, I think, that that has actually happened in my lifetime, that I think it'll take quite a bit of time for it to actually sink in. I think that we'll be able to use some medications which are already available in the clinic. Right. And I think we have a reasonably good reason for suspecting they will reduce the rate of cell growth in your legs. Who knows, perhaps even that it starts to shrink. It sounds maybe dramatic to say, but it's nothing short of a miracle. I'm just feeling like... I can't describe it, it's just a bit like, wow, but in the same sense, I don't believe it. You know, because it's taken all this time for someone to say, well, we found the gene. Like I said, I, I never ever thought that would really happen in my lifetime. It's been a really interesting morning, that's for sure. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much. But Mandy will have to wait for Dr. Semple to do further tests before he can prescribe potentially life-changing medication. For Mandy, finding a treatment is not just about improving her own future. Two years ago, she was contacted by Adrienne Blankenship from Virginia in America, who had recently given birth to twins. One of her babies, Emily, looks remarkably like Mandy did when she was a child. Emily has an overgrowth condition. She was born with extra large feet that were actually shaped like hands. Researching her baby daughter's condition online, Adrienne found photographs of Mandy when she was a child and sent her an email. Seeing those pictures, it, it really made me go, oh, wow, because she definitely it looks, Emily looks so much like Mandy in the face, in, the, in the, the body, in the upper body and all of that. Emily's legs aren't as big, but I could still see some similarities. And we knew from the beginning that, that this is, this is who we need to talk to. Adriana told me about how she felt when Emily was born and she used to hide Emily away in a sense or cover her up if she was in a pram. Talking with me made her realise that she didn't need to cover Emmy up and just to let her daughter kind of live her life. Later in the year, Emily and her family are coming to Britain to meet Mandy and her medical team. Two months ago, Mandy met with Bob Watts, a prosthetic specialist who believed he could help her walking by preventing her right foot from dropping. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Long time no it see. Is, isn't it? How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thanks. How Good. Are you? Bob has made a silicon sock to help support Mandy's foot. Slide your foot into there. OK, and then if we lift it up, we can put the Velcro on. Right. Yeah? Yeah. The device we've, we've made her to, to try and lift her foot up, um, I think, providing she hasn't grown at all, um, should do the trick. Uh, I think Mandy's pretty positive about it, so I'm sure we'll be able to get her walking. So I'd say if we move you, down, uh, move you around, 
throughout my life medically there have been certainly ups and downs. I've come to the point where now if this doesn't work I don't know what else there is left to do in terms of helping me with the foot drop. One. You sure? <laughs> you don't want to happen. I know, you know, it's like just something new, isn't it? You know, I don't yeah. cope well with change when it's anything's... No, okay. I'm just going to put my knee One, in front One, two, of three. Very good. Right. Hang on, hang on. I need to get that independence back that I lost two years ago, you know, and I'm striving forward every single day, every single week, every single month to try and do that. Well, obviously, there's always certain obstacles that are in my way. I can't move myself forward. It's, it's easier. It's just that it's the confidence. I know. I know with me, I know what it is. It's a bigger step every time you do it. Bob's new device has helped Mandy take her first steps in a long time. But unless she's able to reduce the size of her ever growing lower limbs, it will remain extremely difficult for her to walk. No! In Cambridge, Dr. Semple believes he may have the solution to Mandy's problems. He's found a drug he thinks may shrink her giant legs, but he doesn't know if it will work, and it can have serious side effects. After 37 years, Mandy Sellers has at last had her condition diagnosed and is hoping she will soon be able to take medication to switch off the rogue gene which causes her lower limbs to grow. Mandy has decided to mark this momentous turn of events by creating a permanent reminder of her rogue gene. Since Dr. Semple said to me that he'd found the gene that causes why my legs grow, I thought, well, I've finally found an identity. I actually know what it is now when all these years I've been kind of wondering. So I decided that I'd like a tattoo done. Yeah, yeah this is the design I've got. Now, okay. what do you think? My idea was obviously, because it's caused by a gene mutation, I thought the DNA double helix sign would be good and to have the chemical symbol of the gene either inside of and the outside of the actual double helix a permanent reminder of who Mandy Sellers is at long last and kind of something to be proud of I think so we'll see how it goes. I've never seen Mandy have a tattoo before so um, I hope it doesn't hurt her too much. <laughs> I don't really want to watch her in pain but yeah hopefully it'll look really good at the end. See whether it makes you want one. <laughs> I don't think I'll be having one Mandy. <laughs> Mandy's been through obviously a lot, she's had a leg off, so having a tattoo is really uh, nothing compared to having your leg amputated. How's that? Wonderful. Yeah. I think she'll go fine with it, I don't think she's going to have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it does hurt a bit, but because it stops and starts, it's not a pain that's continuous, so you can kind of deal with it. There we go, complete. Super, that's great, that, thank you. Do you like it? Mmm. Awesome. What do you think? That's really cool, isn't it? Mm. I think it's really, really good now it's done. I think it certainly looks better that the writing is over the top rather than inside because it just wouldn't have worked at all. So, yeah, I'm really, really pleased with that. Done a good job. <laughs> Since isolating her faulty gene, Dr Semple and his team have been experimenting on tissue samples taken from Mandy's leg. They found the drug rapamycin stops the signal that makes the cells continue to grow. The drug is currently used to prevent the rejection of kidney transplants and may become a cancer treatment in the future. Rapamycin is a very valuable drug in medicine which blocks growth of cells in the body, especially cells which are rapidly growing. But the new treatment is not risk-free. It can cause breathing difficulties and it suppresses the immune system. It's really exciting to know that there's a drug that Mandy could take that could stop the legs from growing. But obviously, on the other side of things, there's side effects that you've got to worry about. Sue wants to help Mandy weigh up the pros and cons before she makes a decision as to whether or not to try the new medication. Well, so the legs shrinking, that's going to lead to increased mobility, would hope, wouldn't you? Yeah. More independence. So obviously more independence means my ability to go out on my own. 
because I can't do that at all now without you or without somebody else with me, can I? Yeah. I'm 37. You know, I don't want to be bedridden until I'm 86 or something. You know, that's not me and that's not the way I want to live my life. I guess we need to move on to the cons, I suppose, don't we? There's more side effects that concern me than others. Yeah. The fact that it, it might depress your immunity, that's obviously a really big one. Mm. That's a major thing. If you were to start taking the drug and contract pneumonia in the first week, then that would be pretty uh, mm. devastating, wouldn't it, really? Mm. So I think the inability to heal properly is the one that concerns me because I don't already mm. heal very well. The thing that just popped into my head mm. is about not taking rapamycin. Because I can't yeah, see yeah. any pros the leg to not grow. taking it. The cons are that the leg yeah, will continue yeah. to grow. Of course it is, yeah. Cons increased weight gain and decreased mobility. So? So, we seem to have more pros than cons. We do. I don't want to wonder when I get a few years down the line, what if? Mm. You know, I think a lot of us go through life wondering what if, and this isn't one of the what ifs I want to have. I want to give the drug a go. Hopefully I can start taking it as soon as possible. OK, so shall we uh, get the shoe off and have a look at this toe? Yeah, yeah. see if it, give it looks a like a bit it needs more. something doing to it as well, eh? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Mandy has decided to take the new drug prescribed by Dr Semple, but it can slow down healing, so she needs to get a minor operation done first. She has an ingrown toenail. Yeah, it's all the skin growing over the side of the nail. Mm. So it doesn't look the best, it's does it? It's that side, isn't it? It's worse than the other. It just seems to have grown quite a lot in the last month or so. Yeah. Sue regularly cleans and checks Mandy's foot for any signs of infection. It's not bleeding too much today, Not I? today, no. Nails growing right into the sides, isn't it? Having this toenail removed is definitely kind of the last hurdle before I do start the medication. I said my worry is that if they say they can't take it off for whatever reason, that will possibly make me think twice about going on the medication because of the possible side effects of getting an infection. It could lead to septicemia, which may mean amputation. I mean, yeah, that's an extreme example, but that could happen because that happened last time with my left foot. The medical team from the Royal Blackburn Hospital begin by thoroughly examining Mandy's foot. This is an ultrasound probe. Yeah. And we're just looking to see what the Doppler signal is. It's like a pulse. That's right. What I want to make sure is that uh, the circulation is not going to be affected. It shouldn't be. Is it a boy or a girl? Uh, yeah, <laughs> signal. <laughs> Do you think? Oh. <laughs> so this flap has grown right over it. Yeah an inch all the way around there. Oh, we can see that. Okay. Mandy feels very little sensation in her lower limbs. Do you feel any pain at all there, Mandy? Not at all, I mean, occasionally I'll get like a throbbing sensation and it seems like it's my foot, but I won't know where on my foot it is. But okay. you can stick a needle in it like it's doing now, I can't feel nothing at all, nothing. I can't feel it, so to me, get down there, whip it out, it'll be fine. You know, so I think they're more worried about it than I am. Even though it was firmly attached at the bottom, and it was firmly attached at the bottom, it, mm. to be honest, it's quite loose. It's come away really easily. Mandy, would you like to keep your nail? Some patients do. And... No, you, you can gladly dispose of okay. that, thank you. <laughs> right, Mandy, done and dusted. Okay. You did great. Yeah, thank you very much. You know where we are if you need us. Yes, right. Okay. Nice to see you again. And you. Thank you very much. See you later. Mandy must wait six weeks for her toe to heal before she can begin her potentially life-changing treatment. A month later, and it's a big day for Mandy. All right, you guys ready? She's finally going to meet three-year-old Emily from Virginia who shares the same faulty gene and has a similar overgrowth condition. She's flown over from America with her parents and her twin brother, Michael. Who are we going to meet? Mandy. Yeah, right. <laughs> For the last two years, Emily's family has been getting advice and support from Mandy over the internet. I'm feeling excited but apprehensive. She's never seen me kind of 
fully because obviously when we talk over MSN, you know, Skype or something, then she sees me from the waist up. So I'm wondering she might be a little bit scared of me, which is natural for kids that age to be, but hopefully she'll be excited enough to kind of look past that and say, oh, it's Mandy. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, heard of Emily's that. overgrowth condition makes her appearance strikingly similar to Mandy's at the same age. Emily! Oh, Hello! Is that Mandy? <laughs> Here, do you want to get out? Can you go say hi? Can you go say hi? Come on. Hello! How are you? What, what did you say you were going to do? You going to give Mandy a big hug? Are we going for a big hug or are we going for a high five? Hey, <laughs> high five! <laughs> We have a few little presents for you. Oh! And the Lion King, and we have a Dalmatian. Who wants what? Which one? <laughs> oh, I think we've got it. That is. We so got well. it? Wow! Hey, thank you. Can you say thank you? Hey, thank you. Oh, yay! We're here now to feed the tigers. I said if my knees are knocking, but I haven't got one to knock. <laughs> Meeting Mandy, it has been one of the most amazing experiences I've had in my life. Thumb and finger touch it. Just go for the mash where his mouth is. Absolutely perfect. It's got a runny nose. <laughs> <laughs> She's a strong woman, and I want my daughter to be like that. Mommy loves meerkats. But getting Mandy's oversized wheelchair into the meerkat enclosure is a struggle. It's on a bit of a slope, that's a problem. Whoa. Chris knows that without a cure, his daughter will face similar challenges. Kamikaze meerkat. Right, come on. When I look at Mandy and think of Emily in the future, it is a little disheartening because you, you don't want her to have to struggle to that extent. But at the same time, to see how strong Mandy is and how she's been able to cope and go on with her life, despite all these troubles, is also very reassuring. Emily's mother wants to know all about the new drug Mandy is going to start taking. What we were talking about a couple of weeks ago, and I know you were talking about rapamycin. Right. I'm actually starting that in a few That's weeks. Great. Yeah. So, fingers crossed. I mean, Dr. Semple said he's hoping that at least it may stop the growth, if not start shrinking it. It's going to be amazing for you, but I hope it's amazing <laughs> for us. Not that we want you to be the guinea pig or anything like that, but... <laughs> well, I don't mind being a guinea pig if it works for me and then subsequently it helps Emmy, you know, then it's worth taking the chance, isn't it? She's so young and if she started taking something like that and it stopped the growth, I mean, that would be fantastic. It opens up the whole world, doesn't it, for her, really? Yes. So hopefully if it can help her, that that would be amazing. It really would. So. Thank you for being such a... I'm, safe. I'm already going to cry for being such an amazing role model. The next day, Mandy, Sue and the Blankenships go to Addenbrooke's hospital to meet Dr. Semple. Hello, at last. Hello. <laughs> Mandy, Sue, hi. How are you? Very well. And just straight down at the end of the corridor. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yet again, Mandy. Always again. a pleasure. <laughs> when did you very first become aware of the overgrowth? Was that, was that apparent as soon as Emily was born? I had her at 28 weeks and we just noticed that her feet um, were misshaped. So we actually had Emily has been diagnosed in America as having a mutation in the same gene as Mandy. We now know that the genetic alteration which Mandy and Emily have is, is not identical, but it's extremely close. However, looking at them as people, they clearly have different patterns of overgrowth. And I think that's because different parts of their bodies carry this mutation. Mandy's overgrowth affects her body from her waist downwards, whereas Emily's affects her chest as well as her legs. Dr. Semple hopes the new drug he's found to treat Mandy's condition may also work for Emily, although her young age makes her case more challenging. I always feel more comfortable as a physician dealing with, with adults whose growth period is, has finished, and there's a whole new set of issues in somebody as young as, as Emily. The idea will be to target the abnormal cell growth while letting normal uh, increase in height carry, carry on. But in any treatment given in childhood, for example, even giving steroids for asthma, it's, it's something which has to be thought about carefully. Despite the risks, Mandy hopes she can be a human guinea pig for Emily. Love to you, Mandy. Thank you. 
so she should take the medication and she won't have the problems that I've had. So that will be fantastic for her and for me to see that, you know, if it does stop her legs from growing and see how her life is different maybe than what mine has been. I'm excited about what the future will bring for Emily and her condition and Mandy for that matter. Little Emily has given Mandy even more motivation to try the new medication in the hope it will eventually help both of them. The big day has arrived. It's time for Mandy to have her final tests and measurements at Addenbrooke's Hospital in Cambridge before she begins the treatment which may change her life. Hiya. Today I shall be starting the medication that will hopefully stop my legs from growing, if not shrink them, fingers crossed, and it's just a momentous day. In 2010, seven months after her left leg was amputated, Mandy had a body composition scan. Two years later, that scan has just been repeated to see how much her lower limbs have grown. Dr Vicky Parker has the results. So how much weight have I actually put on since the last scan then? Does that show that on there? Um, well, the last scan, I happen to know you were 115 kilograms. Right. And you've gone up 15 kilograms since that time. But what this scan tells us is that that is pretty much all fat, effectively. Right. Yeah. Um, so, and that's about sort of three stone. Okay. And that was interesting comparing the results from 2010 to today. Obviously I knew that my weight had gone up, but sometimes when you see it written down in black and white, that's the proof, isn't it? In terms of fat distribution, what we know is that you're very, very unique. So we just don't really have a benchmark to go from, but what will be important will be comparing your measurements now and sort of going forward yeah. from that viewpoint. Okay. Before I start taking the medication, I've had to have various tests. A lot of it has been blood taking and glucose test to see how my body's coping. What is it? It's this side, isn't it? Yeah. No, <laughs> we're not going to have to. As long as the blood results come back OK, then hopefully I should be able to start the medication soon, very soon. These tests are the final obstacle for Mandy before she can start her treatment. The medication has to work. It's my only chance. It's my last chance. And if it doesn't, I don't really want to think about what will happen if it doesn't work. I don't see there being any options. Um, that all seems fine. Your lungs are lovely and clear and your heart sounds nice and healthy. OK. Mandy's clean bill of health means she can now take her first pill. So I have in my hands some tablets. So there you are. Yeah, thank you very much. And time will tell what happens. Okay. Okay, so right exciting too. times. Indeed, absolutely. <laughs> Bye for now, mate. Okay, thank you. The moment has arrived. This little white pill could be exactly what Mandy has needed for over 37 years. But will this new medication shrink her giant legs? It's like a little miracle in a pill, isn't it, really? Because it can just... Something that small can do something so major to a human being. It's the start of the journey. Three days later, there's no sign of any side effects, so Mandy is allowed home. She spends the next 12 weeks taking the daily pill she hopes will change her life. Waiting to find out if the medication will work is stressful. To relieve some tension, Mandy and Sue decide to distract themselves with a new hobby. They are learning how to shoot clay pigeons. Great. Cheek on the comb. That's better. Uh, much better. Can you see my finger? I'm excited about giving it a go. Well, I'm not confident I'll hit anything, but we'll try. <laughs> and when it goes off, yep. it'll be like that. How's that? Mm -hmm. All right, so hold on to that. I try not to let anything hold me back. Obviously, having one leg holds me back quite a bit at the moment, but obviously it's not held me back from coming here today to do this. Oh, too high. 
Life's too short not to kind of give things a go if you want to give it a go, I say. On its way, get in front. Bye. Right. Hey! Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Great shot! <laughs> Three months after starting to take rapamycin, Mandy has experienced only minor side effects. Today, she will find out if the drug is working. Mandy is back at Addenbrooke's hospital to have another body composition scan. Hiya. Hi, Mandy. How are you? How's you? This scan will re-measure her body fat to see if there have been any changes since she started taking the medication. Well, this is the moment, isn't it? it is, yeah, the proof of the pudding. So to kind of be sat here now having a scan that may show that I've lost, you know, quite a bit of fatty tissue, that's kind of like a life-changing moment, I suppose, to kind of get my life back on track again. Dr Parker played a key role in the research which led to Mandy being prescribed the medication, so she too is eager to see if there are any changes in Mandy's lower limbs. It's still quite soon, in three months we wouldn't necessarily expect to see anything, so I think we'd be very happy if we see that growth has stopped. Today's going to be a really exciting day. Hopefully this scan will give confirmation, you know, black and white on paper, that the amount of fat in the body is reducing. And that happens, that is really, really amazing. Thank you, see you later. Dr Parker and her colleague Laura Watson compare this scan with Mandy's two previous ones. Dr. Semple then analyzes their findings. It's a tense wait, but finally, it's the moment of truth. Mandy, hi. Hello. Mandy is about to find out if her legs are shrinking. Well, it's lovely to see you again. You've been taking the tablets now for um, about three months. Yes. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. How have things been on the tablet? Any, any sign there's been any change? The stump. That has changed quite a lot. I've got a figure in my mind that I think I've lost maybe between six and eight pounds. Actually, according to our scans, you've lost quite a bit more weight than that. Um, right. And if you look at the amount of fat in your legs alone, mm. it suggests that you've lost something like 20 pounds of fat. <laughs> <just> <laughs> okay. That's a weight loss of almost a stone and a half in just three months, all as a result of the new medication. I knew the leg had gone down, but just that much, it's just like, <laughs> just wow, it's amazing, isn't it? So despite all my, my natural caution and uh, my very strong desire not to raise any false expectations, I'm actually very, very optimistic having looked at these results. This is a, a huge change in weight over a very short period of time. Mm. I think the dramatic thing will be now to follow this over the next year or two years and see what happens. Unbelievable news, really is. I mean, I've lost a stone and a half. For the first time in Mandy's life, her lower limbs are getting smaller. Considering that, you know, when Mandy's been weighed in the past, her weight's constantly gone up, you know, to suddenly drop by such a dramatic amount is just totally unbelievable. Mandy's responding so well to the new medication that she hopes to one day be able to walk again and get her independence back. Hopefully in the future I will not be bedridden. My life can start again. I'm able to do things by myself more, which is obviously extremely important to me. Today is a momentous day for Mandy's family too. It's probably a day they thought they would never see. I think it's brilliant news, really, because obviously the more weight she can lose, the easier she'll be able to move around. But there's one important person Mandy can't tell her exciting news to. Her grandmother Ethel passed away a few months ago. I just wish that she'd have been around for this year, next year, just to kind of see, you know, the difference that it will make to my life. If someone had asked me what, what Mandy's future held a year ago, I would have thought that it wasn't going to be a particularly positive. But now, the future's looking incredibly bright for Mandy. Thank you. you know, thank you for everything that you've done. And, you know, it's just, you've, you've changed my life. You really have. So thank you.